Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here tonight for this very first series of technical analysis um, if foundations and technical analysis uh, charts. Uh, I am. I put together a, 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 a nice material here for us to go over. Hopefully, you can see my screen now. And um, you know, essentially, what I wanted to share, I wanted to share a few concepts um, that uh, are. are from technical analysis, going from the very basics um, up until more advanced stuff. You know, uh, technical analysis is a very vast world in which uh, us as traders, we definitely need to be very aware of not only the fundamental side, but also the technicals because technicals drive the market a great deal. So uh, hopefully in this video, we can cover the very basics. I'm going to try to keep it very simple. Uh, just covering, you know, the, you know, some context around, you know, the trend, uh, volume, what is support and resistance, understanding candlesticks, uh, understanding moving averages, and then we're just going to leave it there. For future uh, series, we're just going to go over um, a little bit more in depth, such as uh, the concept of confirmation, uh, moving average crossover, market, how to measure market breadth, um, how to calculate implied volatility, and so forth. But I hope that, uh, you know, tonight you enjoy this session. Uh, again, just interrupt me at any point if you have any questions, um, and, and then we'll discuss it live. And I'm, all, I'm also going to be uh, toggling back and forth, uh, you know, the chart to show in real time how we, you know, analyze and put this all together. Some of this content may be uh, new for some of you, or you may already know this, but we're just going to build on that, okay? So, uh, thank you again for being here. The first thing we're going to talk about is the trend, okay? In in technical analysis, the trend uh, is, is a fact, so prices trend. And this concept was first introduced by Charles Dow, the first inventor of the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, back in the in the late 1800s, where he uh, developed so, you know certain theories and theorems, and one of the theorems was the prices trend. The prices are not random in the market. Okay, so what exactly is a trend? Um, a trend is a directional movement of prices that remains in effect long enough to be identified and still be profitable. Now. Uh, what does this actually mean? Well, what this means is that prices tend to go in one direction or the other for elongated pe periods of time or, uh, you know, independent of time frame. The technical analysis is very fractal in its nature, meaning that we can be looking at a chart, at a daily chart, and it has certain trends, but we can reduce it to a weekly chart, to an hour chart, to a minute chart, and we can see smaller trends within them, okay? Notice that the important point, uh, one of the important points that's being highlighted is that this movement needs to remain in effect long enough to be identified, still be profitable. And with the benefit of hindsight, if, if we have now charts that lets us analyze the past, it is really easy to spot trends because we see clearly on the chart. But while we're uh, trading life, while we are actually in the action, in the move of every day, it, it becomes really difficult to understand at which stage of the trend we're at, uh, whether we're at the beginning, at the middle, or at the end of a trend. Uh, there are ways to identify that with some technical analysis tools, such as oscillators um, and, and volume and market direction, uh, but we're just gonna go over that in, in a little bit, okay? Uh, how do we identify the trend? Okay, so basically there are two types or three types of trends. We, we've got the uptrend, which is uh, characterized by higher peaks and higher troughs, or more, you know, uh, you know, in, in, in more commonly known as higher highs and higher lows. What do I mean by that? Let's just switch over to a chart. What I've got here on my screen is the daily chart of the S&P 500 index, um, the one day, uh, one year chart, which means that every little candle represents one day. And what I mean by uh, higher, higher highs and higher lows, or in the technical world, higher peaks and troughs, I mean that whenever you see, well, first of all, the first thing we can spot is the trend. 
And notice how uh, since, you know, March 23rd of this year, because of the COVID crash, we, you know, we've got this, this horrible drop. But ever since we have seen an incremental increase of prices over time, which uh, it is clearly a trend. It is clearly an uptrend. OK, so what do I mean by troughs? This would be a trough. Uh, and these are prices at which the decline uh, stops, the decline halts. Uh, these are support levels. And we're just going to see that in a little bit. OK, um, and then we can I also identify peaks in the price. These are the you know the highest point of the price at any given time. Uh, before we knew what was going to happen then. Okay, so these are peaks and troughs. So as we, as you can see, uptrend is identified by higher peaks and higher troughs. You know, the price is advancing more than it's not. And conversely, a downtrend, which we can also see here, for example, when the prices crashed on March, you know, from February to March earlier this year, that we can see actually. Let me just uh, clear this drawing. See if we can zoom this a little bit. We can actually see lower highs being formed and lower lows also being formed in market. Okay, so this is what I mean by how do you spot a trend? So let's just go back to our presentation and bear with me here a little bit. Okay. Um, so the, the the there's a little premise uh, or there was a premise with the efficient market hypothesis. Efficient market hypothesis uh, was developed by some theoreticians and our academicians that uh, they say that the price the prices are random and nobody can beat the market. Uh, they say that basically. Uh, you're better off just uh, putting your money to work in an index fund and and any uh, risk adjusted gains are just not possible. But this has been challenged and this has been proven wrong by many, many uh, fund managers, independent traders, uh, people that consistently beat the benchmarks every single year. And it's because the market is actually not random and the prices trend. Now, another good uh a factor that we have to uh, evaluate is the volume okay so what is exactly volume so volume in short refers to the number of shares a security has traded over a specific period of time often measured daily so basically this is the transactions how many people bought and sold a specific security and why is the you know why is volume important well basically the premise is that volume can help us identify or confirm the direction of the trend, as well as, you know, it can help us identify when it changes. What do I mean by that? Well, if the market is advancing or, or making new highs, and along with that, the volume is, is incrementing with the advance in the market, we can say that the volume is confirming the advance in the market. Therefore, it is a healthy bull market it is a healthy uptrend but if we see that as the market advances the volume becomes thinner so not a lot of people are transacting not a lot of shares are being bought and sold that is an early sign that the trend may be uh, toward its end or it, it may be ending um, not only the volume diminishes when the market goes up but also the volume goes higher when the market corrects or the market goes um, you know the, the other way. So think about it as this is the market going up, up, and up. And here uh, we have the volume. Okay. So whenever the market is going up, we have huge spikes in bars. That means, you know, that this is confirming the trend. But the moment we have to be careful about again is whenever the market keeps going higher on lower volume, and whenever it drops, it, it drops on higher volume. So that means there's, there, there may be a little bit of reversal coming. Um, and we're going to explore that in the future, okay? Um, so uh, support and resistance. Support and resistance are levels that we, you know, it's like peaks and troughs, we definitely need to be uh, aware about because they're, they're, they're major important points in a chart that determine whether the price advances or declines. So what is actually support? Uh, support is a level where buyers 
become more aggressive than sellers and halt the price decline. So uh, let's let's just look at the chart for a second here. Um, this levels of support, and I'm just going to draw horizontal lines here, so we can spot. Um, you know, with 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 the pass of time, you can you you will be able to spot support levels very very easily on the charts, depending on uh, on you know what time frame you're looking at. Uh, but it's basically where the price stops um, declining. Whenever we're looking at let's say this area of support, okay, we see that the decline coming from this point was somehow met by buyers at this level that were willing to buy the security or were, were willing to buy the underlying at this level and halt the, the, the price decline. So the, the, they are making sure they're, they're, the demand is higher than the supply, therefore reversing this movement, okay? And the same thing happened here. Um, you know, on the, right around this level, we can actually see two levels of support where the price declined by this amount got bought up here um you know uh, bounced up a little bit and then came back down again and uh you know came back back down to this level and buyers again were aggressive at this point same thing we can uh actually deduct from the uh, sorry about that let you know same thing we can uh, deduct from uh, our actual resistance okay and resistance is, is the level where sellers become more dominant than buyers and therefore they halt the price advance um as we can see here in the chart as well uh levels of resistance can be thought of in uh, up in the in, in the upper level of this of this price targets um this is where you know people buy 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 and then at right at you know at this uh, you know point in time the the sellers become more aggressive or as powerful as the buyers and they halt that advance they they hold them down uh, and then if demand if if supply now it becomes bigger than demand boom it causes prices to drop so those levels of support and resistance are are very common a lot of people looking at the charts are looking at almost the same levels um, and they're waiting for that level to either be broken or uh, if the security bounces off of that. So that is that is certainly very important um, for that, okay? So uh, let's go to the types of charts. The types of charts, uh, basically there are three main categories of charts utilized today, okay? Line charts, bar charts, and candlestick charts, also known as Japanese candlesticks. Uh, there's there's a fourth category that is not very much utilized. It was utilized maybe 50, 60, 70 years ago, which is the point and figure. And before people had computers, before people actually had software that produced all this information, they had uh, they, the, in pen and paper with little X's and O's, they actually uh, draw things like that for a price advance and then things like this for a price decline uh, on on graph but they, they don't do that anymore these are the the main the main ones that people do today so let's take a look at some of the uh, you know some of the examples of a line chart and why why is that different from a candle um, we can go to a a line chart here of the s p the line charts are mainly used for very, very large periods of time. When you're looking at data that's 10, 15, 20, 30 years in the past, the line chart allows you to see the graph in a more orderly way. It allows you to see more data. If we, for example, watch, this is a 20 year chart, um, you know, in, in, in monthly, monthly uh, intervals. We can see a clear, uh, you know, clear view of the behavior of the underlying. This is the S&P 500, all the way back from, uh, you know, 2020 to 2000, you know, early 2000s, right? So we can see and we can spot trends very, very easily, very, very smooth. But it's not going to be much more helpful than that. It, it's, it's just going to be for very long time frames. Uh, the other one is the bar chart. And let's just switch to bars. 
And we can see that bar charts, and let me just switch to a different time frame here. Bar charts show us uh, some more information than lines, but quite not as much. It's not as easy to see as the um, you know as the candlesticks. And I'm just going to show you why. We can take a look. Let's just eliminate this line so we can see it clearly. Um, each little bar represents, if it's green, represents an advance in price. If it's red, represents a decline in price overall. But what does this mean? So we've got the left handle and we've got the right handle. The left little handle is where the price actually opens. Uh, and the, the, the right handle is where the price close for the uh, for the individual day. Uh, the length of the, the range of the bar just represents the range of the day for that specific security. So in this case, the S&P uh, back in June 5th uh, opened at 31.63, got up as high as 32.10 and ultimately closed at 31.94. Um, but whenever you, you look at an aggregated period, it just becomes hard to see. It's not as, 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 as uh, nice and clear as the candlesticks. Uh, now, if we switch to candlesticks, you will notice the difference in, in, in you know, the hollow and the green and the red charts. It's just nicest to see, okay? So let's just go back to our um, slide here, okay? And basically we've got three different, um, three different types of, of candles, right? We've got the bullish candle, uh, the bearish candlestick, and then the, this is called the doji. Uh, the bullish candlestick is whenever we've got an open that is lower than the close, okay? Uh, these little things are called the shadows and they just look like the wick of a candle, right? And the shadows represent the highest level of that security during that day, the highest traded level. And this indicates the lowest trading level for that specific session. Um, now, the, this is called the real body. This is what is most relevant for us as analysts, as traders, um, because this is where the you know the the move actually happens and where the move is substantiated. Okay, if 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 a security opened here and it, or opened low, you know at the lower end of the spectrum and close at the at the higher end of the spectrum, the real body is very long, indicated that the move uh, sustained, okay? Um, but if we got something like, uh, let's say that the price opened here and then advanced a little bit and closed around here, well, the move wasn't just, it, it was a very uh, weak move. It wasn't a strong substantiated move uh, so therefore, you know, less confidence is given to the advance. Okay. Uh, same thing with the bearish candlestick. With the bearish candlestick, you have to think about the opposite. The the open is at the top of the real body, and then the close is at the bottom of the real body. This is still the same range for today. The security may have opened here, traded uh, up for a little bit. But ultimately, you know, closed down. Um, you know, it may have traded at this level for a little bit, but ultimately, ultimately closed down. Um, it, and it's oh, again, you know, the the longer the the body of the candle, the more the strongest is the move. Okay. Uh, and then we have something that's like the doji. Like the, you know, the doji is where the open is is exactly at the same spot as the close. And in this is, you know, the outcome of a battle between bulls and bears. Uh, they just couldn't get over each other. They they were fighting to see who controlled that, but you know, it was right at the same level. What does a doji mean? Well, the doji just means that uh, it. Let's say that if if this were to be a bullish candlestick, okay, this may have signified that the price tried to advance but ultimately came down to the same level. Well, this may mean a reversal in the price that may come next day because the momentum on the buyers was just not there. Uh, the 
also the same thing could be thought if, if this you know was initially a red candle where prices declined for a little bit but then the buyers came along and pushed the price back up to the original level so what uh you know what this is tells us well there may be a reversal in the price there may be some momentum picking up to the upside and then ultimately we can probably expect a reversal out of this okay so uh let's just look at again the s p 500 um you know each little bar each little candlestick represents a day so uh we can see that you know it, it's really nice to see the trends. It's really nice to see, uh, you know, the the magnitude of the declines. Uh, for example, we can see this bar right here. That the the actual advance on this bull candle wasn't it wasn't as much. It, it was a small body, but then we see a long body, red candlestick, followed by another, uh, you know, similarly long body candlestick. What this tells us is that the advance was minimal and that the decline was was in more magnitude um, because because of the long body. Now, if we see something like uh, this bar right here, this red bar, well, what we can conclude is that the the there was indeed a drop, but the drop was was halted up until a certain extent. Uh, the 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 drop wasn't substantiated because the bulls or, or the, the 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 bullish people actually pushed up the price a little bit, so the close wasn't as bad. Okay, um, so that is that is the, the the concept of 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 the candlesticks. Okay, uh, again, really easy to see, real clean to understand versus line or bar charts it just makes the process the whole thing just easier to see okay uh, because this is the s p and the s p is an index that is not actively traded uh, so we cannot measure the volume we can only trade the s p through uh, derivatives through options or through futures uh, there's not volume in the bottom but if we change or we switch to something like apple we will see that now we have a volume because actual shares are being bought and sold in the open market. OK, so this is where we're going to do our our next uh, our next uh, uh, study. So the very next thing I wanted to show you guys was moving averages. OK, and and for this specific session, we're just going to. We're just going to leave it here to moving averages. And then in next sessions, we're going to talk about, um, you know, more in-depth stuff. Right. But basically, what is a moving average? Well, a moving average is a constant period average of prices that is calculated for each successive period interval. The principal goal of moving averages is to smooth out shorter fluctuations and focus on the trend that fits the investor's time horizon. What what is it? What does it mean by that? Well, the moving average is is just a tool that that helps dampen volatility helps you see a clear picture of of where the average prices are going in the future uh let's just plot a a a simple moving average here so that we can see and and this is on apple and we can we can plot this averages for all the periods that we want okay in this case i'm going to plot a 20 period moving average and i'm going to assign a blue color so i can identify it and this is blue line okay the two most widely used moving averages are the simple moving average and the exponential moving average now please note that in the vast world of technical analysis there's probably like eight or nine moving averages you've got the linearly weighted moving average geometric moving average triangular moving averages but those are more for very very advanced technicians uh, and for very different um, studies now the the most widely used that people retail traders and institutional traders use are the simple and the exponential and i'm just going to explain the difference of those two how are they calculated and how could we use them to our advantage to do our analysis okay so this is a 20 period moving average the simple moving average is the simplest of all averages it, it like the name says it's just an average it takes the uh in this case 20 periods 
right? So it takes the average of the past 20 periods and it divides it by uh, by 20. So it's, it's the sum of the last 20 observations divided by the, the number of observations. And it just gives us a nice and smooth line of the overall direction of the trend. Uh, please note that the moving averages are what's considered an, a lagging indicator. Well, lagging indicator is, is an indicator that reacts after the fact. Uh, because it tracks price, the price is going to react a lot faster and the moving average follows. Uh, this could be done for multiple periods of time. So in this case, this is a 20 period, but we can also do a closer one or a longer moving average. For example, I can just plot here a 50 day moving average and I'm going to color code it so that I don't confuse it. And I can also plot a 200 day moving average. Oops. And by the way, guys, if there's any questions at this point, feel free to interrupt me um, at any point. Okay. So uh, here we go. We've got uh, a 20 period, a 50 period, and a 200 period. Simple moving average. So the, the more periods I have to analyze, so the more data we take, okay? So therefore, the, the average is going to be more, uh, more apart from the actual price because there's more data to be analyzed. The, the fewer the periods, the, 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 less, um, the less distance is going to be between the price and the moving average. Um, now, also keep in mind that it, there, there are certain levels um, of moving averages that act as support and resistance, as previously noted, right? For example, we can see that Apple, in this case, on our daily chart, uh, it was riding the trend. It was riding the 20 period moving average to its perfection here, as we can see. Uh, so, so this line acts as support. And, and many people, millions of people are probably watching the same average. And when they see that Apple breaks this price over here, okay, where, well, like, you know, the, the likelihood now is that prices are going to continue to go down. Uh, now notice that there was a there was a slight decline, but then it was picked up by buyers over here. It was picked up by a support area and, and prices bounced off of that and continue continued ex, its trend. Okay. Um, the 200 day moving average was never breached. Uh, and this is a very important level at the institutional level. The 200 day moving average is a very important level that most people, uh, you know, big hedge funds, big funds look at to see whether the long term trend has been broken in any security or any underlying. Anything uh, less than that is just normal fluctuations of the security. Therefore, they don't pay much attention to that. Now, another variation is the exponential moving average. And the exponential moving average, and let me just clear this for a second. I'm just going to keep the, let's just keep the 50 and the, the 50. Oh, and by the way, on the simple moving average, each period, it's given the same weight. So if we have 10 observations, each observation is given a 10% weight. So data from 10 days ago has the same weight as today. The, the exponential moving average is a little bit different because it gives more weight to recent data than older data, uh, which means it gives actually twice as much the importance of data today than it will. Therefore, it will react faster. And let's see uh, what I mean, okay? So we've got an exponential moving average and for demonstration purposes, I'm going to place it at the same 50 periods. And I'm going to color code it uh, blue. Okay, so uh, notice how the exponential moving average, it, it's slightly faster. It reacts faster to price changes 
than the simple one. The simple one lags a little bit more, you know, let's see at the starting point. At the starting point, as soon as prices start going up, the simple moving average takes a little bit more while to actually pick up, whereas the exponential for the same periods adjusts faster. Adjusts faster because the weight of the recent data, it's, it's heavier, right? Same thing here. Same thing whenever prices turn, the longer moving average or the simple moving average takes a little while to actually, you know, uh, take the direction of the trend. Whereas the, the, the exponential one just, just kind of goes faster. And the, the advantage of this is that it allows us to identify changes in trends a lot quicker than the simple one. So for instance, if you waited here, for the to get a signal from the simple moving average to, to you know kind of curl around and and go up well you'll be waiting you would probably you would have missed this move okay you would have missed this move because the, at the point of where the moving average is converging or it's actually changing directions this part of the move has already happened where here you could probably pick it up faster now one also one of the drawbacks of the exponential moving average is that it it gives room for more false signals because it changes with price so fast. Um, the, the market may whipsaw for a little bit. So you may get a false signal, which I can probably identify one here in which uh, see how the market, you know, kind of tanked and this faster moving average wanted to go down, uh, you know, a lot faster than the simple one, therefore giving us a signal to sell but the market, you know, bounced right off of that and pretty much kept going. So it, there, there's got to be a trade-off, like everything in the market, where if, if you want to get in the move as early as possible and catch the trend as early as possible, the exponential moving average is going to help you a great deal. But it could also give you false signals every now and then, whereas the simple moving average can give you a more uh, stable signal with less false signals but it, it's gonna be more laggy it's gonna it's gonna make you miss maybe the, the 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 meat of the move before you can get in okay and then we can we can actually pl plug in um a couple periods in here for moving average uh which you know for 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 a lot of time frames for example i'd like to always follow exponential moving average because they again they change prices a lot faster. So I like to follow the 13 period and I'm going to color code it yellow. And I also like to follow the 20 period. Okay, so here we go. So we, we've got a whole lot of moving average, but each one is tracking the price on different periods and giving us different levels. On this clear uptrend, all the all the averages are clearly following the price, but there may be instances such as here that the 13 and the 20 exponential moving average gets breached, but the 20 and the 50, they don't. Uh, so if and somebody is just looking at this chart, they, they just don't do anything to their position. But if I am a swing trader that I am looking at the shorter term moving averages, I, I, I would have probably been out of the position already on a false signal. So that that's one of the drawbacks there. And uh, and also, you know, you've got to confirm with price, see what the volume of the security is. For example, at this peak, we see a huge spike on the volume, which is also accompanied by a huge advance or a gap up. So you know, whenever there's huge volume and a huge gap up in the security, you know the probabilities are more toward continuation, toward you know the advance just keep going until it meets a wall of sellers. Um, so uh, you know that's uh, that that's the you know what I've got for you guys today. As far as you know, understanding candlesticks, the overall context of what is the trend, how to spot a trend, um, things like the support and resistance, things like um, you know the Doji chart, the line chart, the moving averages. Uh, if you have, if you guys have any questions, just just let me know right now. Let's just have a discussion. 
Um, and then we can we can jump into certain certain things. We can jump back and forth. Yeah. So Gustavo, you mentioned you mentioned swing trading. Mm -hmm. So would you put more weight on your moving averages, or would you put more weight into looking at two-legged pullbacks? And and based on you know the direction of the market, using a, a two-legged pullback, or kind of how do you view? The difference between those two those two theories of, of predicting the direction of a, a particular underlying stock. That's a great question, Norma. So here's my setup. I'm going to share with you guys what's my, what's my actual setup uh, when I am trading. Okay. So I have normally a 200 period simple moving average, and I have this three. Okay. The I have the 13 period, 20 and 50 exponential moving average. And it just goes like this. Again, uh, charts are very fractal. So I, I only look at the daily chart whenever I'm looking at the overall move. So let's say that if I am playing, um, let's say that I am playing uh, NVIDIA, for example. Okay, this is the daily chart of NVIDIA. But for the most part, if I am swing trading and swing trading is uh, anything that is, um, it's not one day, you know, intraday trading is to close the position, intraday it may be minutes hours or seconds swing trading is you know you, you, i buy today and i may sell tomorrow or next week or a few days from now so when i am swing trading i mostly use the 10 minute charts okay and you can see the development of these moving averages uh just going on and i use them as support and resistance levels and also moving average crossovers that's that's a great that's a great concept um let, let me just show you norman Whenever there's a crossover in moving averages, such as the faster moving average, uh, let me let me show you here. You see this point where the moving averages converge, meaning that this blue line, it's going, it's this is the uh, the the 50 period moving average. It's now going below. This these ones are faster, are going above the slower ones it means a shift in momentum the momentum is shifting from the downside to the upside in moving average crossovers having multiple moving average allows you to spot those crossovers and take a position with probabilities on your side with enough momentum and volume so that's why i use uh, you know all these moving averages in different periods it may use a one minute if i am day trading like very very fast within seconds or minutes and this will let me know what the overall trajectory in that specific time frame that i am looking at such as let's let's say this crossover right here in qualcomm right this is the one minute chart if i were day trading qualcomm um you know of course it's it's really easy to see because you know and when you're trading you don't see this part right you don't see in real time that there's there's about to be a big drop all you see up until this point is okay i've got a huge spike up i've got some sort of consolidation but look at what the moving averages are doing the moving averages are you know getting very very close all together okay now the when the faster moving averages the the 13 week and the 20 week start to go below my slower moving average it it signals me that that the the momentum has shifted and and you can take a gamble you can take a bet with probabilities on your side okay i may buy some puts i'm going to enter a short position and i'm always going to have my stop here and and i know that the probabilities are on my side and of course in this in this case it kept dropping down but you never know you just you know kind of rely on this crossovers and and the actual um momentum of the chart is that is that a does that kind of answer your question norman sort of no that was that john, john that was john that asked that question my question you kind john, of sorry about that that's all right no actually it was rick this is rick that asked oh, that question because yeah, okay. okay. i don't have, I don't have my, my my i'm sorry guys i'm confusing your names <laughs> that's all right no that, that answered my question thanks for stopping. awesome my question was real quick is, you know, uh, trying to take this information and applying it to our options trading. Like I can see where, okay, like let's say, all right, 
we're looking at an index because that's what we usually, you know, at least from where I'm at now in my, in my trading journey and like looking at, okay, why am I going to put a put up, a put spread on? I'm bearish or bullish because of this. Is that one of the things that you do? You'll see, okay, there's this, this kind of uptrend going. I says, all right, so the, the futures um, NASDAQ is in a, is an uptrend. So I'm going to be bullish. So yes. I'll make, do some covered calls or I may do a, uh, a put, um, uh, sell some puts. Yes. Um, okay. So uh, great question. Norman. So here's what I do. Okay. If I am placing a trade that is a swing trade, uh, maybe 30 to 45 to 60 days out. Okay. Um, I will look at the overall, uh, the, uh, the overall view of the market. Let's say that I'm trading the ES or this is the, the, the pretty much the same index, right? The S, the SPX. Well, I know that for the time being, okay, we are on this momentum right here, okay? I know that um, the the price has been advancing. It is above the 13 week. It is above the 50 week, sorry, the 20 period moving average. And it's also above the 50 week or the 50 period. So I am going to uh, perhaps place, this is a, maybe a good bet to place a put spread right around this level um, in 30 to, you know, let's say 30 to 45 days, okay? Maybe I can, I can bet that, okay, I'm gonna place a put spread that is, is, is at the level of the 50 exponential moving average. So I go to my main screen, I look for, Let's say you know January 22, 44 days out, and I may look to uh, place those put spreads, right? So if we go back to the chart and we see that the 50 period moving average on the daily is at 35.27, market is at um, you know 36.75, so not too far off. But let's see what deltas are we talking about? 35.30, uh, you know, roughly so to speak, that's a 30 delta. Uh, so I know that you know. If I feel comfortable with my risk level, I may put a, a put spread right around this level, okay? Knowing that I am going to guide myself by those moving averages and also any possible potential crossovers. Uh, but again, as, as we do here at the Dorian Way, we're a little bit more conservative. Uh, something that uh, perhaps O'Brien would do more often than not would be to uh, sell at this 200 moving average, for example, which is, uh, you know, at 3166, it must be a very low delta. Um, you know, 3160, we're talking the seven delta. So this would fall within the Dorian Way guidelines for, for selling a put spread, guiding yourself on the daily uh, simple moving average, which is a huge level for the index. Gustavo, I've got a question for you. Can you, can you blow up a segment of this of this chart here so that we see maybe 15 or 20 candles, just just a few. Yes, absolutely. Wait, you want me to go in the middle? Or? It doesn't matter. Any any particular area. Okay. We can probably right there. That's plenty. Zoom out. All right. So so perfect. So um, pick pick four or five of those, and and can you read the sequence? Because I know in that last session uh, that I that I taught, we we started having questions about where did it uh, where did the price open. Where did it close? Why is it red? Why is it green? That's, can, you, that's can, you, can you read like five or six compared like, okay, this one opened higher, this one opened lower, this is where it closed. So that everybody understands how to read it that way. Yeah, like absolutely. Perfect. Now. Thank you. Th thank you for that, Ernie. Um, okay, so let's pick this specific time frame right here. Okay, and I'm just going to draw sort of like a wall so that we can focus on this candles. Um, this is, you know, maybe a week's period. And, you know, let's start with this candle. So this on the S&P shows us that for this specific day, each bar represents, uh, sorry, each, each candle represents one day, one day's activity. Uh, so for, it looks like this is on July the 2nd, okay. July 2nd, price opened up, because it's a red candle, it opened up at the top of the real body, okay? 
it traded as high as this wick of the candle on the upper spectrum, and it traded as low as the lower end of the wick, and ultimately closed at this level, okay? Open higher, traded even higher, but couldn't quite keep up with that, uh, sort of sold off a little bit, but actually closed a little bit higher than its lowest point. So okay. stop, stop, stop right there. It, it, you're telling me, make sure I understand this, that it's red because it closed lower than it opened. Is that, that is right? correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, it closed lower uh, than it opened. That's why the, it. it automatically is red. Now we okay. see that the very next day uh, there was actually a little bit of a gap because the price is closed at this level, okay? In theory, next day, if all else is equal, you would see an opening in prices at the same level, right? But the markets are not always that efficient. There are movements um, in, in non-continuous markets. You know, when one market closes and it opens next, mo next morning, depending on the demand, it may be different. So in this case, price close right here, and next morning it gapped up, it opened at a higher price, okay, which is at the bottom of the candle. It traded as high as this little wick of the candle that we can see, and it closed near the high. It, it closed here, and this is what we call a, a somewhat of a long body, a very strong body, which means that the advance in price was very substantiated. It was a strong move because it didn't sold off right after it got up up until this point. Um, so it's green because it closed higher than it opened. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and then, and then we see back and forth again here with the prices, you know, next day opening higher, closing lower. We see the very next day opening lower, closing higher. And, and so on and so forth. So we are in this zigzag. Look at the candle, for example. We can see that the price opened at this level, traded as high as this little wick, but all of a sudden, price sold off up until this level. But it didn't remain on this level. It kept it kept its price and ultimately, you know, closed a little bit higher than its lowest point. Um, so that signifies maybe that there was a little bit of demand here, um, not ready to crash just yet, just kind of holding on there. And, and, and that's, so, that's so, how we... So that, yeah, the, the cadence of it, which we were having a lot of confusion on that last call, was why is it red? Where does it open? Where does it close? Why is it green? Where does it open? Where does it close? And I think... To, if 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 I'm putting it in my words, I'm hearing you say consistently, it's red because it closed lower than it opened. It's green because it closed higher than it opened. 